will be the longest one. Darksiders, Zelda, and I'm gonna finish up by noon. It'd be nice to have him just so we don't have to open the door. I mean, if that's your, more your call. My stools are pretty fancy. Oh my god. It's all the glitter I eat. <laughs> Damn. You guys are gonna, I'm gonna, just so we don't get stuff about not. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what is rank, Peter? Rank? Rank. So imagine like general oh. or captain or um, private first class. Just It doesn't have to be military, just like any like position. Any Anything that, that denotes that like, yeah, you fit. Reviews editor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is the first line of this? This is planet. Which, yeah. <laughs> they say Earth. Yes. Nothing could, on could, Earth. You cannot Earth. look at this. I don't want. Sorry. That's. This is why I didn't want to hand this thing. Sorry. Out. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'll oh, turn you're, it over. you're ruining you're totally it. Right. Sorry. You're totally right. Damn it, Peter. But we Do are gonna. Should I pass these out? Who's going first? Yeah. We can. Well, we can pass those out. Okay. But actually, there should Take be one. Order. Pass it down. Um, the the only thing I would say is that Die Hard and. Titanic should come later. I'll do Sandlot first. Okay. I'll go we'll first. Do Zagunis. After I'm prefacing it, then Peter. I like your system. One P. <laughs> yeah, it's like one inside of a circle. And then. Or like an A. Allie and then Rob. <laughs> Everybody on YouTube just got the loogie noise as soon as they signed in. <laughs> why is it? Why are we like this? Mm. I'm gonna read off the rules too. Yes, they're important. I meant to. I thought I had underlined more important things for each point. Do you need this? Yeah. But we're not. We don't have these events anymore. Right. You can use them if you. No, no. We can use them if you want to. It's just we're not limited to just those. Okay. For that section. I'm easily frightened. So thank you. Dude, look at Cam 4 right now. <laughs> no, it's fine. It just, can you see the feed? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Wait, do we want people seeing Cam 4 right now? Because they are. Oh, yeah. Ah, whatever. Can we hide Cam 4? Oh, I can do that. Rule 24, take this process very seriously. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's what you said? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sweet. Oh, it says 24. I don't know why I did that. That's weird. You, you did auto numbers, whatever it was. It says 18 oh, on mine. Oh, yeah. Huh? You probably have the first one, so it says one through oh. five, uh, six. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm the best. Plus is DOS? Oh, no, that was, uh, sorry. Coffee spilled. <laughs> it was spilled coffee and then I threw it at Pete and I forgot and he didn't notice so that was there was no like so yeah. you'd be surprised if uh, can you go higher than that uh oh uh, chat no something's up <laughs> are you gonna suck <laughs> yeah. my what well goob goob shoe riot I love okay. this comment I don't know what's don't happening know. goob screenshot know. that I still don't think it would make sense Fultoning. <laughs> I saw also funny to think that like things like liquid snake would <laughs> can translate to a completely different meaning. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not necessarily a character. Have you have you heard that supercut of him, him, him saying liquid? It's just like liquid. 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 Yeah, the GameSpot office used to be like a Metal Gear soundboard between like, Meryl, and like all the, you know, shit like that, like constantly. Have you tried doing that with uh, Ben Jenka? Ben no. Loves, Is he good at it? He loves Metal Gear. Nice. Yeah. Two minutes. He has the... Why are we talking about Metal Gear? What's your favorite Metal Gear? Uh, and don't even say like Metal Gear or, so, or no, Solid Snake. It's it's five or it's Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, original. it's good. Mine's still three, I think, but... That was mine for a while, but now when I go back to play it... The beginning is bad. Boss. Fight against, like, Ocelot and those dudes. I don't like that part. Can we add Japanese anime? In the beginning of three? <laughs> mm-hmm. Beginning-ish. 
Oh, no, no. like after the boss? Yeah, after you meet the boss enemy. on the bridge? Well, depending, depending what, uh, on how this goes. Yeah, when you come back, it's like a fight. Something else, yeah, revolver. Yeah, okay. Raise my chair. No, it's the uh, thing that Otakon that says. Wrong, Wait, what? Otakon has this whole thing about his Japanese animes. This never happens in anime. Okay. I kind of wish the... Damn it, I can't say anything. Dark Siders. Dark Sliders. Hideo. Go, you know what today's May 3rd, Rob, not the 4th? A shirt. Just kidding. No, you're not. That's rude. It looks like Jean-Luc is handling a piece of C4. <laughs> <laughs> Very little reaction from him on that front. <laughs> he's like, shit. <laughs> we found out. <laughs> Jean Luc might be a demolitions expert in another, <laughs> in another field. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the lobby, GameSpot's weekly hangout. I'm your host, Mike Mahardy, here as usual with Pete Brown. Hello. Callie Plaggy. Hello. And Robert Handlery. It's good to be alive. <laughs> with, uh, with his Star Wars shirt a day early. Are you, do you have another one that you're going to wear tomorrow for May the 4th? Yeah, you know I do. I hate that uh, I hate that day because it just sounds like everyone has a lisp. That's rude. It just, I, I hate having that TH sound in there. Um... Anyway, we have kind of a weird show today. Uh, I'll admit that up front, which you, if you tuned in uh, early enough to see uh, something we got set up in the studio, we got a bit of a, a weird segment, but we'll get to that later. Uh, first off, as usual, we have a giveaway thanks to Shiva, our Twitter manager. Uh, it is PS4 keys for Marvel Heroes Omega Beta. Uh, unfortunately, this is only for PS4 in North America, but if you don't follow GameSpot on Twitter, go follow us and then retweet the giveaway tweet that Shiva will send out. And if you're in the Twitch chat, she'll usually put that in here. If you're on YouTube, like I said, just go to Twitter. And uh, later in the week, we'll pick winners to send those out to. We have a bunch. I think we started off with, no joke, 80,000 of them. So uh, depending on how many people watch the stream today, we might run out, but <laughs> it remains to be seen. Um, yeah, and uh, if you're on YouTube or Twitch or GameSpot, we have the chat up here, so we're always welcoming questions. I got some questions about Darksiders 3, about the Prey demo, about... Zelda DLC via Twitter this morning, so we uh, always welcome the audience participating. Uh, and one news item I wanted to get out, uh, Rem Remedy Entertainment, who did Quantum Break, they there's new details about their new game. It's going to be published by 505 Games. Uh, it's codenamed P7, and believe it or not, get this, this is huge, it's going to be a cinematic third-person action experience. No shit. Yeah. Whoa. Pete, you, uh, <laughs> you didn't really... You got some flack for Quantum Break, right? Even yeah. You, would you give it a seven? Six. Oh. It wasn't a good game. <laughs> yeah. I, I never played it. Oh, I, I like live stream back with like Danny O'Dwyer in the day. I liked, there were moments in combat which were good, which I wasn't surprised because it's like, yeah, like Remedy has always made games where I like that sort of aspect to it, but it was the, it was just the real convoluted everything else in the game. Yeah. Uh, so it remains to be seen what they do with this. If you want more details on it, the news uh, story is on GameSpot. They have like numbers and figures and royalty rates and stuff like that. It was a pretty detailed report, uh, but go check that out. Uh, anyway, okay, let's get into it. Uh, last week, the Prey first hour demo went up on uh, PS4, or Xbox One, PC, I believe all three platforms. No, not PC. No, not PC. Okay, PS4, right. Xbox One. Um, that's a point of controversy for a lot of people, actually. Right, maybe that's... Why didn't was there any discussion why they didn't do that? No, but the I forget the developer's name. Um, Arcane. No, like the individual. 
oh, an individual oh, the developer. Person. The person. Yes, gotcha. the person, a developer. Uh, someone was asking about, you know, is there a PC port? And the guy said, no, because we're developing the game natively on PC. Mm. Well, no shit. You're not developing the game like using a PlayStation 4. But the Dishonored 2 PC release had a lot of problems, right? right. So they mm-hmm. released the demos. Uh, they didn't release a demo for PC. And now everyone is kind of like, well, what are we to believe, right? Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it's weird. Uh, yeah, I wonder if they're just like really playing it safe or something as far as like their launch. I don't yeah. Know. You'd um, think they'd get it out there so people could test it and actually report like, yeah. my rig sure. doesn't work on this. Oh, we didn't test that rig. We didn't know that those variables might be an issue. I mean, if yeah. anything, this would behoove them to do this now so they don't have customers upset when they get the thing that they've paid 60 bucks for. Was that Raf Cole Antonio by chance saying uh, that on Twitter? You love to say his name. <laughs> great name. <laughs> it is a great name. Uh, no, I don't think it was him. It, it might have been though. Okay. Um, but the first hour demo was out for PS4, Xbox One last week. Uh, a few of us got the chance to play it. Rob, you played this a couple times now between the demo and like doing this as a preview event back in the day. Sure. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. people around the office are excited, including myself, just because you know it's I like arcane stuff. I love Dishonored too. Uh, I love that, uh, you know, like everybody's calling it a spiritual successor to Bioshock, System Shock. I'm really excited for that kind of game, those immersive sims. So I'm excited for this, but um, I kind of wanted to get people's take that have tried it out around the office. Rob, I think you have the most experience with it. What's your, uh, are you excited based yeah, on what you played? I am. Uh, I'm excited to see where that game gets to because, you know, they've definitely created something where there is a replayability factor. Like it, there's ex- you know, experimentation. Like you see these videos, um, I think Tamor was, was, you know, you can morph, uh, as the game progresses, you can morph into, like, any kind of object, like the aliens you see, the mimics that crawl. So I think Tamor was messing around with, like, just a toilet paper, <laughs> launching himself and rolling around. Sounds and like just, him. And just, yeah, it does sound like him. <laughs> no, you can disguise yourself. Uh, you can then uh, cheat the system. And I think Aaron was telling me something really interesting where they, um, in the demo, they actually lock it off as far as, like, when you get that first open area room, where there's a series of different ways where you can kind of, you know, choose your own path. Uh, I, apparently, people like found a kind of it's like a crossbow Nerf gun that, uh, to my understanding, just shoots darts. However, there is an area where um, you're not supposed to get through. Yet the purpose of this gun is actually to shoot darts through cracks and hit the switch from inside the room and mm-hmm. open it up. And so people were actually able to kind of already kind of like not exploit, but like. Um, Experiment again, like and, and like found a way to like actually get a little further than anyone else. Um, so I just I'm really interested to see the late game, but mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. the beginning hour right. is so far has been really good. I think I was thinking about today actually, like the I'm sure people have seen it, like the first hour actually has a or 15 minutes of the demo is like kind of a big spoiler, uh, as far as a, a twist in the story. And but I is it a spoiler if it's 15 minutes in? If we don't know it already. It's just one of those it's, cases where it's I mean I, you it's a spoiler. Well, you wouldn't want to tell somebody before they play. Absolutely. I mean, okay. Because you want that to happen, you know, naturally. Yeah. Um they've had a tough job marketing this because yeah. A, some people think it's, you know, a lot of people thought it was Prey 2 rather than a reboot that Arcane took over. because uh, Dishonor was more of a thief kind of style game, spiritual successor, and this they've been marking as Bioshock System Shock. They but they also don't want to show people too much about this game. But then when they do, it's kinda, you know, like Lose lose situation, but I do agree that I wish maybe they had prepped a demo that started after that kind of thing started. But it's a tough spoiler. I don't want to talk about it, but it if you've watched coverage at all on this game, you know where things go eventually. But it would be cool to experience the kind of uh, I don't know Portal Two vibes you get right at the beginning uh, for the first time. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's just it's hard to say anything just because in this demo you're just not. To my understanding, you're not given what this game actually like gets to or amounts to, where you're taking uh, alien parts and making ammo out of it. Um, you, you just barely, it feels like you barely get to where the meat of this game is. Um, but it's still a pretty cool experience. Like I, I actually am a huge fan of these mimics here that you're killing. Like just walking into a room and feeling so uneasy mm-hmm. because they because three of them have formed a uh, a vase pot radio setup and you just don't know and next thing you know you there's a lot of jump scares and you and i feel like you are uneasy just because of you know the, the fact that anything in the room can be one of these guys to jump out at you uh um, yeah you see the glue gun here we saw the wrench uh, we've seen the shotgun the shotgun looks very much like the bioshock shotgun you mentioned that crossbow 
Uh, sorry, glue cannon, not glue gun. But uh, I have a question from GameSpot, orig- uh, regular Goop Shoe Riot. He says, will skills be open to unlock from start, or will there be a progression system? Uh, yeah, like that's the thing, too. The, the eye needle. The eye oh, needle. Yeah. Your uh, oh, neuro so mods. Neuro, so yes. you're shoving a needle in your eye every time you want to upgrade, which is sick. Yeah, to like compare it to something else, it's like um, tonics from <clears throat> Bioshock Infinite, uh, mm-hmm. plasmids from Bioshock 1. Right. Um, I th- I'm pretty sure, as far as what I've seen, is you have like um, three general... Um, abilities like things like hacking and security uh, that are more that are more uh, specific to the environment and how you can get farther as far as opening doors and et cetera. Um, and then the other, th- I think there's three or maybe more of just the um, alien powers that you eventually um, like research or scan or whatever you want to call it, and then you become um, or do you absorb their power. So the mimicking, right? You absorb the the mimic power to to roll around as a coffee mug. Do whatever you want. Yeah, in order to, you know, get through that little slit on like a bank teller uh, window or, um, so there they go oh right there. Oh my God, oh, they're, they're so freaky. They're really, so they're kind of cute. I actually think they're kind of cute too. Like if you, what if you <laughs> see one sometimes, he'll like wave at you and then he'll just like Aww. run away. <laughs> We're going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> that me. flipping you the bird though and you just don't know because they have a wisp of smoke for an arm, not actual fingers. Sure. Pete, Callie, what about what about you two? Are you guys excited from what you've seen of the demo, or just what you've seen from what little pre coverage they've had? I still am waiting to play when the game is actually released. Mm-hmm. I didn't really mm-hmm. want to get started and then have to stop because yeah, your right. save yeah, doesn't. Same. I thought it was going to at first, but then everyone told me no. So the I've save doesn't it. transfer, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly, and that's the other part for me too. Is that even if um, the the save was uh, you you were able to transfer your PS4 save over to uh, the final game. Mm-hmm. I still wouldn't play it because I want to play on a PC. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard there were some problems with the uh, controls as far as like, like kind of clunkiness or whatever you want to call it. Which apparently I think they they spoke out and said that they are aware of it and will address it. But um, regardless, like just like Dishonored, I really want to play this with a mouse and keyboard. It's mm-hmm. it's very, especially with these frantic moments with like. A wrench, which also isn't like always at the ready as a melee. Um, it kind of, you know, just like I feel like Bioshock, right? Mm-hmm. You had to switch to that weapon, so you're not. I don't know. You, you want to have that like really quick um, ability to defend yourself. Um, yeah, I'm just to get back to the idea of like, am I looking forward to this? Like, I when I watch this footage, I really don't know what is interesting about this. Mm. It's really, really tough. But everyone who's played the game has said so many great things about it that I'm almost just more curious than I am excited. Yeah. yeah, I think the it's a difficult thing to watch being played because um, a lot of it is uh, the atmosphere. Like I think it's it has this like spooky like there's a lot of tension, right? Like you don't know if you're going into a room uh, if the mimics are disguising themselves as something. Um, I think that's more interesting to me than just watching it played. Like I'm even watching this now. I'm kind of like this is not what I would be doing. And well, yeah, I um, this is weird gameplay. And it's uh, <laughs> that part, like it's just not the kind of game I would want to watch. Like I wouldn't want to watch um, somebody mm-hmm. else play Dishonored either. Um, that might be just me. Um, but I think more of it is about the atmosphere, and I'm definitely intrigued by that. Like that's the kind of thing I do really enjoy. It's interesting. Interesting, you said Dishonored because when I think of Dishonored, uh, the series in general, like you want to see people, maybe streamers who are extremely good, right? Who mm-hmm. are doing like, like impressive reels. highlights or speed runs. This is a game I feel like could have that ability because I think you've seen or heard like you ha- you get I think you get abilities later on where it's like kinetic blast and uh, the the mimicking ability so people or they're allowing you to shape shift into a mug and then launch yourself up onto a ledge two floors up in order to like get that jump mm-hmm. so I, I think they're possibly catering to that but again like that's just like so later on like I, I haven't really seen enough of that and mm-hmm. this is just this hour just yeah Seems yeah. just to it, to I play think, to play devil's advocate. I I like that they haven't shown much. I mm. I, I mean I think in a world where movie th- movie trailers show off everything and it's different with games, but well, but it I don't. Is, but usually there's like a promise with the movie trailer, right? Like even if it doesn't show everything, like you kind of like I don't really know what I'm going to get out of this game, other than I can turn myself into things, and once in a while I'll find something that's an alien. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I guess I'm in an experiment. Like yeah yeah. But uh, I like I like the tone of all of that. I guess that's what I was getting getting at is like this demo establishes tone more than anything else mm-hmm. to me. Um, sure. So that's the part that 
gets me like go. interested in it. Structurally, I'm oh god, to... oh my god, this freaks me out so bad. <laughs> Bottoms up. <laughs> Structurally, uh, as the game is more of one big mission rather than these discrete ones in Dishonored, I'm curious to see how that'll play out because mm-hmm. I'm sure like we'll be doing things in different order and whatnot. The people playing it, but yeah, I'm excited to see highlight reels and whatnot. I'll see how it actually shapes up once it releases. It doesn't. It seems like the kind of game that I want to just play at my own pace mm-hmm. um, and I'm hoping it facilitates that but I guess it remains to be seen this game releases Friday uh, and because it's a Bethesda game because of that policy they we don't even have code yet so we might right. have them pretty much at release but uh, our review will be up won't be up right at release uh, tomorrow in the UK is gonna be working on that let so me I'm, let me speak to this a little bit more yeah uh, so we'll be getting code tomorrow as will anyone who can access like the Australian network accounts because they're 17 hours ahead of us in the future um, so we will have a review in progress ready before the weekend so you won't have to wait too long if you're on the fence to hear some opinion but it will be based on you know the first uh, half dozen hours of the game something like that I think cool. they've said the game is 16 to 20 hours long tomorrow I was thinking like 40 I was, oh god I thought I'm I sure it'll somewhere. fluctuate pretty greatly maybe if, if you it, really rush it I'm sure Dishonored be too, I think took me like 18 I think a lot of people finished in like 13 okay but that depends on your play style right um, and I don't I'm assuming I mentioned this but for those wondering like it's Arcane Studios who also did Dishonored and that's why we're drawing all those comparisons um, but yeah this releases on PS4 Xbox One and PC Friday uh, so we will, uh, like Pete said, have a review in progress up as soon as possible uh, for more thoughts on that from tomorrow in the UK. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I know we're all curious, so I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Uh, cool. So that's Prey. There was one more part that Goob had in his question. Uh, he wanted, if you have been watching the lobby for a while, when we were talking about Watch Dogs 2 once, I said it was like bedazzled and people laughed until we rolled the footage and realized it's actually pretty similar. Uh, but he asked me how Prey compares to Bedazzled, and he in the chat wanted me to say that out loud. But I didn't think it was relevant, but... <laughs> when is Bedazzled not relevant? <laughs> Bedazzled is always applicable. You should go watch that if you have never seen it. I watch it every day before I come to work. It's a gem. Elizabeth Hurley is great in it. Brandon Fraser's <laughs> just <laughs> as weird face. as ever. It's no friends, but... All right, cool. Anyway. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Joey Yee is joining us in the studio here. Uh, if we could switch over, he's got some a sick outfit on. Well, awesome. uh, if you'll notice, he is standing next to a whiteboard, and most of you, <laughs> <laughs> most of you will probably see that those are uh, Hideo Kojima, kind of Metal Gear Solid, all Metal Gear, it's all, all Metal, Metal Gear. Gear characters, organizations, and activities. Uh, Joey added naked cartwheels Which for I you Raiden fans out Thank there. You. Thank um, you. Look that out. Yeah, and. I know this is confusing, and we're still kind of confused. I'm kidding. We are going I'm so confused. to so. <laughs> last week, Tribeca Games Festival in New York City uh, took place, and Hideo Kojima was there to talk about kind of Death Stranding and movie influences and uh, just inspiration in general. And they asked if he were to make a movie, what it would be. And people ask this all the time because Metal Gear Solid, Hideo Kojima's games in general are always super. Well, his, his body is seventy percent movies. Cinematic, yeah. Uh, between Escape from New York. Titanic, um, Die Hard, they're all kind of big influences. Did you, but did you see, though, during that same interview, I don't know if you read it, Escape from New York, Snake Plissken is not the influence that went into Metal Gear Solid. It was actually Robert De Niro from Deer Hunter. Ah, wait, what? Snake. Yeah, Interesting. My that. whole life is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's bullshit. But. Regardless, he, he answered, if I were to start making a movie, I might not finish it because he loves movies so much. Uh, but he also said he would be up for a big budget blockbuster, which I think we would all expect, or a smaller feature with a few characters in a single room, a la Die Hard. Um, single building, single room, you get me. So, Pete Brown brought the idea to us, I'm you know, like, what if what if Hideo <laughs> Kojima did direct not just a movie in the future, but some of our favorite movies from the past. Yeah. And I'm going to let Pete kind of uh, describe the rules of this more uh, open-ended segment and Joey's going to help us out and we're going to do some some weird stuff. All right, so because we're basing this on pre-existing movies, we can't just start from scratch, right? So what I've done is I've created sort of a, a Mad Lib uh, scenario where we can use the terms that Joey has up there, uh, plus, you know, verbs, adjectives that we just think up uh, to rewrite the synopsis that was originally found on the back of the movie box. The VHS synopsis. The VHS or the DVD in some cases, sure, I sure, think. Sure. Um, 
And the rules are each new suggestion comes from the next host at the podium. So we're going to go down the line one by one. So we're not just shouting over each other. Uh, key movie characters have to be replaced with key Metal Gear characters. That's because we, we it, it'll make sense in a second. It does. Uh, host may veto one suggestion per slot bearing it's for the, be- the good of the film and Hideo Kojima. Uh, (laughs) the synopsis must retain the spirit of the original film and also must acquire the spirit of Hideo Kojima and lastly there's one more rule everyone please take this very seriously okay also last rule you didn't add it have fun have fun take it seriously and have fun (laughs) I believe I'm I'm gonna kick this off right okay Uh, and so we are going to roll a trailer after we fill this in and Mike is going to read the synopsis over it uh, and Rob has sort of cut trailers for these okay cool more or less so, all right, okay, we're Pete, I need a character. Um, fat man. Okay. <laughs> all right, Rob, I need an organization. Wait, who? Um, <laughs> Is fat man not on there? Wait, no. hold on a second. Just add fat man and cross <laughs> it out. Add fat man and cross it out. Sorry. Rollerblading demolitions expert. Organization. Uh, foxhound. Okay. Uh, Callie, I need an adjective. Any adjective. Get weird with it. <laughs> no, don't get weird. <laughs> um, explosive. Nice. Oh, that's really good. Uh, verb, Pete. Um, smell. <laughs> okay. Rob, any location? Bermuda. <laughs> <laughs> Callie, another adjective. Big. Uh, Pete, I need an activity. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, I got TVs up here. Um, I'm gonna go with cloning. Yes. Hell yeah! You guys are taking all the good ones. Uh, Rob, another activity, separate one. <laughs> <laughs> I've already started reading this. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to take flirting. No, I'm not going to do it. It's someone else can do that. Uh, developing nukes. Because, <laughs> you know, the other good one. I, have I said what movie this is yet? Should I no. wait? Okay. Yeah, you no. should wait. All right. Uh, Callie, adjective. Again? <laughs> yeah. Um, naked. Nice. <laughs> no, that, that's not that. No, it is. Yes. Yeah, it is. Uh, to say. Okay. Another character, Pete. Another character. I'm going to go with... Meryl. Nice. <laughs> Meryl. <laughs> All right. Another character, Rob. Uh, Vulcan Raven. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, did I get a location yet? No, I did not. Kelly, I need location. Wait, I thought I Rob, gave, you Rob gave you Boomer. Is it the same location? Oh, I can't look. It is. If it says location one, one. you're yes. totally right. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, okay, Callie, I need a plural noun. Um, bombs. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> little story in my. Head. I need a relationship, Pete. Oh boy. Uh, kissing cousins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is horrible. Bad shit about insane. kissing my cousin. <laughs> uh, Rob, another, another or nothing. Never mind. Hold on. Let me fill out this. I got organization one again. Okay, Rob, adjective. Uh, s- smelly. <laughs> Callie, one more adjective, and then this is the last one. Get nuts with it. Um, exotic. Okay, uh, so should I tell the movie yet, or are we just gonna roll the trailer and you I'll roll start? The trailer. Roll, roll it. Roll the trailer. All right, and you go ahead and read it. <laughs> <laughs> you can All take right. your time. These are about a minute thirty long. Okay, less than that. So consider the clock down there if you need to. All right, Jean Luc, hit me with it. <laughs> I don't know which movie it is. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> um, it's it's the one, the one about that starts with S. It's one about the starts boys. Starts with an S. Starts a lot of boys S. in it. I can do that. Okay, thank you. Sorry, my bad. Uh, are you gonna unmute the TV? No, we're good. We're good. All right, here we go. It's the early 1960s, and Fat Man has just moved into town with his foxhound. Kids call him explosive. He can't even thwart a baseball. 
But that changes when the leader of Foxhound invites him to smell on the nearby Bermuda field. <laughs> it's the beginning of a big summer of cloning, wild developing nukes, first kisses, and naked confrontations with the dreaded Merrill and his owner, Vulcan Raven, who live behind Bermuda. Soon, nine bombs have become best kissing cousins. Fat Man is a part of Foxhound, and their leader has become a local legend in this smelly and exotic comedy. <laughs> and that's the synopsis right there. <laughs> so let's keep rolling this. Oh yeah, we probably should have slowed this down a little bit more. <laughs> uh, you can probably skip ahead. <laughs> nah, you're good. We're getting there. It's the kissing cousins. That's we did kissing it. Cousins. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was an actual edit. Uh, <laughs> the Sandlot. <laughs> Film. There we go. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. As it's, that was what it would be like if Hideo Kojima directed Sandlot, one of my favorite movies of all time. All, all right. right, Pete, it's this, your turn. This one's got a lot of adjectives. Mike, give me an adjective, please. <laughs> Bombastic. Okay. Uh, Rob, I need an adjective. Sweaty. <laughs> All right, I need another adjective. <laughs> Kelly. Short. Short. Uh, actually, I'm going to veto that one. Okay. Mm, Harry. Tight. <laughs> <laughs> right, I need one more adjective. I'm not joking. Um, superfluous. Okay. Uh, I need a plural noun. Uh... Go kart. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, I need an adjective. Oh, for me. Um, yeah. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on that one. Sorry. God. I just want this to be perfect. Like I said, Daniel Kojima would would do it. Okay. Um, effervescent. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Uh, right, I need a noun. Uh, grandmother. All right, I need a number. Oh, God, <laughs> ten. Okay, I need an adjective. God damn it. Um, romantic. You're gonna be tough. Okay, okay, no, 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 this is good, this is good. Uh, I need another adjective, please. Mm, leathery. Wow. Actually, yeah, dude, that works. Damn. Looking at Richard's boots. I don't know. His body part. Uh, f uh, arm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, character. So this is a Metal Gear character. This is the first Metal Gear. I feel like this board <laughs> isn't being used as much as it should be. Revolver Ocelot. Cool. <laughs> All right. I need a noun. Michael? Feces. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't. Um, noun, Robert. Um, uh, desk. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you look so done. Adjective. I know, we've got a couple more to go. <laughs> um, blind. All right. Uh, I need a plural noun, and then we're good. Mm. <laughs> Lizards. All right. Roll that beautiful footage of um, the. Uh, starts with a G. Starts with a G. Wait, do more. From the imagination of Hideo Kojima, <laughs> the Goonies plunges a band of bombastic heroes into a sweaty, surprise around every corner quest beyond their wildest dreams. Following a hairy treasure map into a spectacular underground realm of twisting passages, superfluous booby go-karts, and a long effervescent pirate ship full of golden grandmothers, 
The, ki <laughs> the kids race to stay 10 steps ahead of a family of bumbling romantic guys. <laughs> <laughs> and a leathery monster with an arm only a revolver ocelot could love. <laughs> I love it. All right. <laughs> I'm going to give it a second. I'm going to give it a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> a, f <laughs> a feces adventure classic from start to buccaneering finish. The Goonies is a cinematic desk trove of blind action, dazzling lizards, and shiver ye timbers thrills. <laughs> All right. That was not <laughs> that, was <it. laughs> that was just a weird version of a weird Goonies. One. That was weird. All right, I think we could probably go to the next, right? There's yeah, not much left. Move on. Sorry. All right, moving <laughs> on. Now we're going to uh, Cali. For those just joining, we are getting to Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC and <laughs> Dark Siders three stuff. Okay. Uh, this is just if Hideo Kojima made our favorite movies because of that quote from the Tribeca Games Festival. Because we're idiots. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Peter, I need a location. Um. All right. I'm going to say uh, South Africa. That's all we can. Uh, I, uh, occupation, Mike. Uh, plumber. <laughs> okay. Uh, character. Uh, big boss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, a different location, <laughs> Peter. Um, <sighs> Oakland. Okay. Uh, adjective. Uh, did we use effervescent? Why is that yes. in my head? We yeah, did. Okay, that's that. why. Uh, <laughs> uh, flamboyant. Okay. Uh, how do you? Uh, I know how to spell that. Okay. Uh, I don't even remember what movie this. Oh yeah, I do. One. Event. The uh, apocalypse. <laughs> 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 oh, you better be able to read this. No. Um, verb. Um. <laughs> Chat's been spitting these out. Um. <laughs> dance. Mm, I'm gonna veto that. Okay. Um, strangle. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. An <laughs> organization. Uh, PETA. Oh, no. from there? <laughs> mm, shit. I like the PETA better. Uh, all right. Diamond Dogs. Okay. It's kind of like PETA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, noun. Submarine. Okay. Does it work? Yes. Okay. Oh, this is the same. Diamond dogs. Okay. Character two. I need a second character. I'm going to say... Coldman. Okay. Adjectives. Plural? I mean, it's for a plural noun. It just says oh, adjectives. Okay. Um, it was. <laughs> <laughs> foamy. No, no, thank mm. you. <laughs> Oceanic. Okay. That works with the summer <sighs> theme. Oh, here we go. <laughs> noun. Um, swordfish. Okay. This is going to be so weird. I think we've lost sight of what the real goal is here. Yeah. Noun, noun. Um, Definitely crying a little. <clears throat> um, soldier. No. Metal Gear Rex. Yeah, Metal Gear Rex. Sorry. Thank you. Just a suggestion. No, Get us back to Kojima. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you're right. No. Um, noun. Um... Metal Gear Ray. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Me no. Too. Um, I don't know. Nanobot. Okay, I like that. Nano machine. Nano machine. Thank Nano you. machine. Okay. 
oh, this is character one, big boss. Uh, noun. Katana. <laughs> Adjective. Slippery. Oh, okay. Thank you. And adjective. Gaseous. Okay. Um, John Luke, roll the D movie. Yeah. Bruce Willis stars as South Africa plumber Big Boss, newly arrived in <laughs> <laughs> Oakland <laughs> to spend the Christmas holiday with his flamboyant wife. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but as Big Boss waits for his wife's office apocalypse <laughs> to strangle, <laughs> Diamond Dog sees control of the submarine. <laughs> While the Diamond Dog's leader, Coldman, and his oceanic henchmen <laughs> round up swordfish, <laughs> Big Boss slips away unnoticed. Armed with only a Metal Gear Rex and his nano machine, Big Boss launches his own one man katana. <laughs> a slippery thriller from beginning to end. Die Hard explodes with gaseous. <laughs> <laughs> gaseous what? Gaseous what? <laughs> gaseous oh, hell, this suspense. Welcome to the party, pal. And a hard man to kill. Bruce Willis. Die. Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> you tripped the narrator up with your edit. I'm sorry. What? What was the last part? Gaseous suspense. Oh Gashes man, suspense. that's my life. All right, let's let's do this last one kind of quick because it's, yeah. it's a long, it's a long one. one, and and let's then we'll get to Dark Siders and Zelda, we, and we let's we really try move. to stick to Metal Gear. Okay, it's fine. We'll we can do, move we on. We can do it. You want to still do it? We can move on. <laughs> no. I kind of want to do it. Let's do it. I okay, do we it. committed to it. Let's yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. uh, planet. Saturn. <laughs> Adjective. Uh, roundabout. <laughs> Another adjective. Bizarre. Are you crying, Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Number. I'm definitely crying. Four hundred. Academy Award. Uh, uh, best. Like, yeah. Best original screenplay. Adjective. Deadly. Genre. <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> Plural noun. Um, rollerblading demolition experts. <laughs> RBDE for short. <laughs> 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 Adjective. Um. Um. I'm <clears throat> prescient. <laughs> Veto. Uh, Veto. <laughs> Just because you don't. That's not a spell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah. Spell. Um, How about? Uh. Um. Florid. Sure. Nice. Uh, time frame. Um, so I will say uh, week. <laughs> Rank. Mm. Private first class. Another rank. A different one from me? Yeah. Um, CEO? <laughs> Is that a rank? <laughs> sure. <laughs> we have not hit Metal Gear yet. <laughs> uh, character one. There we go. Oh, here we go. Thank you. There he is. There's Joey. I know. Character one. Is that on me? Yeah. Uh, Liquid Snake. Character <laughs> two. Raiden. Look how much the view count has jumped. Jesus. <laughs> uh, plural noun. Me? Yeah. Um. Oh no. Oh no, it's you. Sorry. Um. Bullets. <laughs> Controversy. <laughs> Controversy, huh? Okay, let me see if I can. Uh, uh, no, it's it's me. Shadow Moses incident. Oh, it's okay. Never mind. Sorry. Sh Shadow Moses oh. incident. <laughs> sorry. You can take the next one. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Controversy. It's the weirdest <laughs> category of word <laughs> verb. Um. Uh. 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 Fuck. 
Fulton. Conspire. Ooh, torture. Let's go torture. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, babe. Yeah. Adjective. Flirty. Proper noun. Oh, is that me? Yep. Yeah, proper uh, noun. Um, the USS Enterprise. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Adjective. Uh... Smoky. No. no, no, no. Sorry. Disastrous. Wait. Oh, never mind. <laughs> this is a long one. Uh, noun. Wardrobe malfunction. Nice. <laughs> Adjective. <sighs> um... Uh, sneaky. Cross that. Cross that. Plural noun. Uh, philosophers. I'll use one of the organizations. Adjective. <laughs> um. Aromatic is good. Arom. Eric Green. It, oh. Aromatic. Aromatic. Nice one, Eric Green. Nice. Thank you. From Eric the Green chat. has got, given me two so far. <laughs> <laughs> Number. Hmm. Uh, 91. Adjective. <laughs> um. <laughs> horrific. We're all going to lose our jobs after this. <laughs> Adjective. That's it. Last one. Um. Uh. Late. Vito, give me one more. Okay. Um. <laughs> that got to Joey. I don't know. I don't know. Help. Uh, give me something to do. Murderous. Murderous. All right. Here we go. Last Roll one. It. Thank you for sticking with us. <laughs> Bear with me on if, this one. If Hideo Kojima directed this movie, this is what it would be. Spin it. Nothing on Saturn can rival roundabout spectacle and bizarre grandeur of Titanic. Winner of 400 Academy Awards, including Best Original Screenplay, this deadly comedy story sailed into the hearts of rollerblading demo experts around the glo globe, ultimately emerging as the most floored motion picture of the week. <laughs> International <laughs> International private first class private first class Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> wind up <laughs> excuse me wind up sorry light up the screen as Liquid Snake <laughs> and Raiden <laughs> the young bullet separated by Shadow Moses incident. Good, right? Yeah. The Shadow yeah. Moses incident, yet just destined to torture each other <laughs> on the main <laughs> on the main voyage of the flirty RMS USS Enterprise. <laughs> but when the but when the sorry. Uh but when the disasters sorry, Jesus. But when the doomed disasters liner what? <laughs> Shit. But when the doomed disasters liner collides with a wardrobe malfunction and the sneaky North Atlantic, <laughs> their, phil their philosopher's love affair becomes an aromatic race to, uh, for survival. From acclaimed filmmaker and 91 Oscar winner <laughs> Hideo Kojima comes a tale of horrific love in the face of disaster that triumphs as a murderous cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> All right. We got through it. All right. For those joining, those were uh, some of our favorite movies as uh, directed by Hideo Kojima had but he directed also them. not. <laughs> but also just kind of mad with some <laughs> classic 90s Sorry. 80s movies. Uh, all right. Let's talk about video games. <laughs> so 
<laughs> uh, let me come back down to earth for a second. <laughs> Joey's done. Joey's, Joey's done. done. He's unboxing that shit right now. Use <laughs> half of these. Joey, Joey thank is you. Done. Uh. So that was our live production. Oh man, he's actually naked. Upset. Cartwheels remains. Uh, okay. IGN. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> THQ Nordic and Vigil Games announced Darksiders 3 uh, IGN first they had more details on it and uh, I'm pretty excited about this Darksiders 1 and 2 I really liked Darksiders Vigil Games emerged kind of doing a Zelda clone for lack of a better term deal with War one of the four horsemen uh, and then Darksiders 2 came out and you were death going through an open world kind of puzzle uh, environmental puzzle uh, platforming heavy kind of hack and slash adventure uh, and now, with Darksiders 3, you are Fury, the sister to the Four Horsemen. And we kind of wanted to talk about what we wanted Darksiders 3. Uh, I think I'm probably the biggest Darksiders fan in the office. Uh, so I, I guess I'll start. But uh, just to preface it, so Fury is going to be more of a whip-based character. So uh, people on Twitter were asking... Hold on a second. <clears throat> She's the sister of the Four Horsemen. Is she not a horsewoman? Uh, I don't know. Uh, asking the real question. I would here. imagine... Uh, but we did have a question, uh, Poison Ivy, uh, the audio's on. John luc is rolling this with the audio. We could watch this if we want. We could. But, uh, keep going. Uh, yeah, so Fury's gonna be almost like a Bayonetta thing, kind of like whips and, uh, more, you know, like fluid kind of combat, almost like. God of War, even with Kratos and his Blades of Chaos. But here you see the Elder Chard Council, if I uh, recall correctly. But here's Fury herself. And you see War kind of chained up right here from the first game. Uh, but yeah, she'll be... She's more mage-based, uh, based on the news. She will be kind of transforming into different forms, making use of those, maybe elemental powers. You kind of see her here. Uh, in terms of what we want, this trailer doesn't show much. So John luc you could probably actually like cut it here. Uh, in terms of what we want, I I want to see them actually kind of expand on it because Darksiders 1 was pretty small and confined compared to Darksiders 2. Darksiders 2, they actually give you this open world to travel through. They There were many more, like, incidental side bosses. Here you see her talking to uh, the smith from uh, Darksiders 2. Mm. Uh, I think that's him. It looks like him. Very exciting conversation One of the, <laughs> Yeah, they're pretty into it. So here we are. <laughs> yeah, and we... <laughs> will essentially be it'll be more of an open world of course but it's also cool that it's david adams who uh, worked on the original game and joe Matarera. david adams actually recently worked on uh chronos a really good vr game pete you liked it i like chronos a hell of a lot so, oh yeah i heard good things about that so they know what they're doing in terms of 3d action adventure kind of stuff um chronos was a pretty good example of that but same with darksiders 1 and 2 so it's kind of people darksiders 2 had a bunch of new people on it but uh then the thq dissolution happened and uh, Darksiders kind of fell off the face of the earth for a while, but they were almost like cult classics and people kept asking for a sequel and now this is going to be THQ Nordic's first game and Gunfire Games will be working on this, but they are kind of focused more on like an open world that says she's tracking down the seven deadly sins as the bosses. Uh, that was kind of the thing. The bosses in... Darksiders 1 and 2 were uh, like, you know, like more typical Zelda kind of mm -hmm. scale bosses. So I'm curious to see. I would like to see them kind of form the world around those seven deadly sins. So maybe you go into the area where you're fighting lust and it's a lot different than gluttony and whatnot. Uh, if you've seen your, that movie seven. I know. If you've seen seven with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman, then maybe you know what to expect. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, people keep making comparisons to uh, what's the character's name from Bayonetta? No, oh, uh, that's not Bayonetta. Um, I I know this is not it's not coming to me. Right I, don't, now. I don't have it. No. Okay. But anyway, people are making comparisons to kind of platinum style action just because she has a whip. But I mean, I thought the action in two was good. It was more scythe based. I would like to see them actually kind of figure out new ways to incorporate her powers into the traver into like environmental puzzles because mm -hmm. two environmental puzzles were cool at first. Uh, Death was, had this really slick traversal, wall running, and everything. It kind of got stale toward the end of the game, and I don't think they kind of incorporated the puzzles themselves into the open world as much as they could. Zelda games, the older Zelda games, it's easier to do that because there are these actually streamlined dungeons where you could do that. But I want to see them integrate puzzles into the open world more organically, if that makes sense. Uh, especially, I'm wondering if the, her like elemental powers will extend past combat and into that kind of travel and whatnot. I don't know. What do you guys 
from what you know of Dark Souls One and Two, the, I think you all have like brief experience mm-hmm. with them. Yeah. What are you kind of hoping for with Dark Souls Three in regards to uh, like people from Chronos coming back or people that you know worked on VR games and came back? Do you think they could have learned anything from Chronos? Your time with Chronos that you'd like to see impl- implemented here? I mean, to be honest with you, the what I've played of the first two games, I didn't have any problems with it. Like I kind of would just like more of the same, and I do like how the story does jump around between the first two. So to kind of culminate here. I think that's really cool. Like I, I rarely say this, but I just want more of the same. Mm-hmm. I know it's a really safe answer, but it, it's kind of true. Well, yeah, because people, a lot of people were hoping that there would be like a co-op game with all four horsemen. But I'm kind of <laughs> glad that they're sticking to the third-person action uh, in terms of bringing a new character into it. And I'm, I don't know, I'm curious how the whip will work. Uh, Castlevania: Lords of Shadow was a th- the 3D um, Xbox 360 outing with uh, also PS3 and PC. Right, PS3, PC, that generation, and uh, he he used a whip, and that was actually really satisfying combat. It's kind of like, like I said, Kratos, the Blades of Chaos, almost like that reach. Right. Um, that same sort of momentum. Yeah, I don't know from like in terms of fighting these seven bosses and kind of navigating this overworld. Is there anything you hope to see from it? Because this is your kind of game, Rob. Like in terms of, I'm, tr- I'm just action. trying to like gauge. I mean, I really not familiar with the series. Um, You've been playing near though. Like that's a third person action, right? That's like, what I was immediately yeah. like trying to like make those like pulls, right? Like, oh, that's that seems pretty fun. Like I was watching some of the combat. It looked great for two, but I, I suppose like the open world, um, you know, that is such a heavy handed. I mean, what is this open world going to be like, right? Like, is it going to be even enjoyable compared to, like, I feel like what has happened with, like, uh, Horizon and Zelda? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because Darksiders 2 yeah. was more of a item-gated open world, kind of like Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, Metroidvania-ish. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to see that, Kelly, or more of a open world, or Rob, more just, like, well, one you can explore? Yeah, like, I mean, I just... if. I hope there's a reason for the open world is what I'm trying to say. Like I, yeah, would, I, agree. I, I like more and more uh, open world games I play. I, I have to be uh, entertained throughout, yeah. right? Like, like that's why Zelda was so great. They're a dime a dozen now, right? Um, well, yeah, it's just like if they're done wrong, it's really, really boring. Right. So there has to be something, some draw to it. Obviously, this trailer didn't really give a whole lot of information, so <clears throat> no. I would need to. No more. I really like theme. I really like Seven Deadly Sins as a theme, though. That's like yeah. totally my jam. So it's a pretty clear structure right up front. You know who you're going to be fighting. <laughs> exactly. And it'd be really. I'm assuming they were pretty good with their bosses in uh, Dark Siders Two, especially. Pretty massive scale. Kind of uh, reminds me of God of War Two. Opens up with that Colossus that you fight right away, or three when you're fighting uh, the the Titans and uh, Poseidon. You're pretty close after because God of War is another um, comparison people make with these games kind of because of the combat and the fact that when you acquire a new weapon it kind of you could switch between them on the fly like it was Blades of Chaos uh, Blade of Artemis Ar- Ar- Artemis's sword and God of War I don't know I haven't played those in a while but in the sense that God of War 3 you're hunting down uh, the gods of Olympus take them out one by one I would be pretty cool to see how the story integrates the seven deadly sins as bosses mm. seems pretty <laughs> like metaphysical in terms of that's the seven bosses you're hunting It'd down. It'd be interesting if having to confront those sins somehow did something to you as a character. Mm-hmm. Like you have to become a, a worse version of yourself to actually gain power. Mm-hmm. Or resist. Gluttony. Lust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just stuff your I'm face. I'm so strong now. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately, uh, details are pretty uh, sparse on this game so far. IGN has the their IGN first, which is like a month-long coverage of games. Yeah, IGN or first is all month. Okay. Usually, um, so I know Alana Pierce is heading it up, so she has gameplay impressions and stuff. Cool, uh, but don't go to IGN. Just wait until we hear the news <laughs> from them and put it on Gamespot. <laughs> anyway. I have no opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, let us know what you think. Uh, there were questions on Dark Siders Three on Twitter, but I think we kind of answered them. Um, I don't know. People are wondering how the progression is going to go. I, if it's anything like Dark Siders Two, you'll that was currency based, and then you come back to like one person in the hub would be. Who you buy abilities from, like new, like like I said, that that's where the God of War comes in. You would kind of be buying this new sword attack, this new jumping smash attack, new earthquake around you attack. So I'm really curious to see how the hub world will function if there is one in uh, progressing Fury skills because she sounds super interesting. She's more mm-hmm. mage base. Uh, War in the first game is kind of a brute, uh, close combat, really a more strength based, like grappling and stuff. Two, Death was really acrobatic and kind of air juggling 
more that kind of style, but I'm curious to see how Fury will factor in it with a whip and uh, elemental powers. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions in the chat or if you're watching this in, on YouTube or GameSpot after, let us know what you want. Let us know what you think they need to do to get you back interested interest in this series after such a long hiatus or uh, if you're just excited for it anyway. Cool. All right, now to Breath of the Wild DLC. Uh, we were grabbing food the other night after work and then Rob or one of you had mentioned, oh shit. Yeah, Pete, sorry. I didn't mean to give Rob it was, the credit. Steal my spot, it was a conversation right? stopper. You're like, you just knew it right before. Yeah. You, like, <laughs> you got shit. You're, you're like, DLC. guys. <laughs> Bam. Uh, it came at the perfect time too because I think a lot of us finally, burnt out is not the right term, but I think a lot of us were finally like, I need to put this down and try to yeah. play a lot of other things because this year has been off to a fantastic start. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's an understatement. But Zelda, they have announced the first expansion pass. There's another one story based that's going to come out sometime holiday this year. But right. the first expansion, the Master Trials, was detailed in depth. Here you have uh, sounds few great. screenshots and everything. Uh, so Trial of Sword sounds really cool. If you played Twilight Princess, it sounds similar to the Cave of Trials. I might be getting that wrong, but it was out in the uh, desert. Mm -hmm. But you go through 45 rooms starting with almost nothing, almost like Eventide Island if you played that. And you, uh, it looks like you just start with a Deku, almost, a Deku stick on your back. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, here's Hero's Path mode, and which... It, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, just Hero's Path mode, it's going to track your uh, traveling across the in-game map. So you can kind of see where That's you've so explored. Cool. Yeah, so you don't have to look up the actual map uh, online for where the shrines are or Korok Seeds even. Um, yeah, you can because I usually use shrines to kind of dictate shit. I haven't explored here enough or I haven't yeah. explored here enough. How is this going to take into account fast travel? It's going to pretend as though you walked there? Huh. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. It's yeah. actually, the map's like 10 hours in. It's just a bunch of like... Yeah, because yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, like uh, I think 80 hours in, I realized I hadn't even been to East Neklita yeah. mm -hmm. like at all. And I was like, oh, shit. So that would have been really helpful. The people, it tracks 200 hours, right? Oh, is that what it said? Jesus. I think it right. tracks 200 wow. hours. The people that were playing in those videos stick to pathways much more than I do. I... It looked like they weren't yeah. climbing. <laughs> like I just I climb every chance I get. Like I, I do not. Everything. I take the shortest point from A to B possible. Shortest line. I like missed a place in uh, on Death Mountain because I just climbed up the mountain. <laughs> yeah, and there is a hard mode. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory for the most part. It's just uh, bokoblins and moblins and enemies in general are increased in rank. So maybe you'll see more white bokoblins more often. No, yeah. no, no, no. It's that they they take on the strength of the rank above them. So red will be as strong as blue. Yeah, gotcha. still be red. There's not going to be like a new color. Oh, it's just yeah. the strength okay. of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't. I thought it was like a whole shift. Okay. No, okay. it's just yeah. Now right. they're one step up this, harder. There'll also be in this is the one locations like yeah, this. You seem to be hung up on this. I know, I know. It's weird. I, the reason why I don't like this idea of balloons with a moblin just hanging out up in the sky. <laughs> what? Like why? I, I don't know. The whole it, this this game is so immersive, and I just find like that's what fair. what yeah. is this? What I don't. Like the hideouts you come across, those like tree forts, those make sense. They're outposts for them to kind of like guard. Yeah. Oh, well, th I mean, this, this, this could make be sense too, in the yeah. same way. Yeah. This guy is just keeping watch, right? Like he can see a lot farther. He can warn How them of someone coming. Yeah. With the, the Arctorok balloons. balloons. Yeah, but those pop so quickly. Not these. I, yeah, I'm hung <laughs> up on this too. This is like, I, just, it, I don't need to worry so about minor. the sky. Yeah. I don't need to worry about the sky. It's miners' help. Uh, it's just something where it's like, I don't. I, 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 just, I wonder how that's going to play in because I just love the game already. You do you do make a good point. Like, it seems odd. It doesn't yeah. seem as organic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, if you complete the 45 room trial of the sword challenge, the power of the master sword awakens and will always be in its glowing powered up state. When I first read that before I read its glowing powered up state, I'm assuming that just means it'll always be at like 40 attack and right. it won't yeah. drain. Yeah. 60. So it won't 60. Drain. Does it yeah. say that it won't break? No, so, it just says so it'll that's always what be in its telling glowing powered like, up state. I was like, that's bullshit. They didn't say that. But so, so we no, get it. it says we'll always be in its glowing powered up state. Right. When usable is the actual next few words. Right. So which to oh, us, it does oh, break. So yeah. it does break. So and what is the... And it needs to break because that's what yeah. Jess was that saying. That would be OP like, as hell. Yeah. Or, well, then yeah. you're not doing the actual system of the weapons, like switching yeah. out weapons. It would be boring and be... It be it would be frustrating if they did that. When I first read that, I was hoping it would be the... The classic Master Sword, when you have full hearts power up, you shoot out a beam. You can you shoot do out that a beam. already with the Master Sword. Yeah. yeah. In Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Yes. There you go. That's the game. Jesus man. Christ! <laughs> I didn't. 
learning every day. I played like 80 hours of that game. I have the Master Sword. Why do I not know that? You have to you have, have full hearts, and you just do the throw, like try to throw it, and you'll it'll be like a yeah. game. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm really Sweet. excited for that Korok mask that yeah. vibrates when you Let's approach a Korok seed, because 900 Korok seeds <laughs> is way too damn many. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about some of the new armor. Oh my god, I didn't even notice the pinwheel. That's really cute. Yeah. Oh, wow, I didn't see that either. Oh. <laughs> Look at I, his little bun. I love Link. Uh, the, it's, the, I mean, uh, this is so minor. The only thing I would say is that like, I, I do find the game or can, or can be very menu intensive. And I just feel like, I mean, I don't want to look like this forever. Yeah. <laughs> but will I now have it on always when I'm running around? I don't know. Exploring. Well, I think when you, because I have 300 Korok seeds right now, and I'm at the point where I would really like this just because uh, you need 441 to max all your inventory slots. Mm. So that's was sort of my goal for a while. But I hit 300 and I was super fatigued on it. Yeah. So what is like the max melee weapon capacity? Um, it's I, th I think it's probably the like, entirety of that first page, it is. right? So mm -hmm. however many that bows is. Bows and arrows are different. There's fewer slots for oh. for um, bows, and then shields is also the full page. I don't know how many. It's like above 20. Okay. And you can also have Majora's Mask, which I'm pumped about. What I don't. Does that do? So yeah, don't know what it does. We yet. don't know, and uh, we're actually like uh, Joey's working on a cool video. Where we're kind of going to speculate. I think we have some good ideas. I'm not. This is the one. Actually, I don't know. I'm. I'm thinking maybe something with the Blood Moon. Like you get like a, maybe like Ooh. a power up because I don't know something time based. Time. Yeah. Oh, that's a good call. Uh, that one's questionable. I think the other ones we had um, better ideas of what they could be like. Um, uh, tingle. Uh, I don't. Someone, someone had the just like you have the Korok mask to find Korok seeds. Maybe the tingle would like light up for uh, fairies mm -hmm. uh, that are nearby because uh, those are always um, hard <laughs> to find and like kind of risky. His freaking hot pants. Yeah. He. I said it earlier. He reminds me of like the scene in A Christmas Story where they put yeah. him in there. He just looks so not into the fit. No, <laughs> Dead the man face. kids in line. So get going. Take the picture, mom. I'm ready to get out of this. I'm like never ever gonna wear this. Um, I'll wear it all the time. And then the other one, or there's two other ones. Or the other one there's is the Phantom, um, the Phantom uh, armor. God, I forget what someone said. Someone in the office had a good idea, but maybe this was like, you know, he looks like a I Dark Nut from Twilight Princess, the enemy. I kind of. God, it looks love cool. it. I kind of love this one. Mm -hmm. this Yo, first full body suit. Yeah, right. You full said that. Yeah. Armor, yeah. Uh, it looks cool. Aside yeah, from the gimp costume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess but even then you can see Link's face. Like right. here, you can't see anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I'm excited for this. Um, oh, well, one more thing we want to mention. Oh, well, Midna's Helmet too. if you play Twilight Princess. So they're just... This is nitpicky. I'm excited to have all these things, but um, it seems like they're just throwing these things into here as like Easter eggs and kind of fan service. Whatever, I'm on board because I like Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess a lot. Um, but there's a travel medallion as well. You want to explain that really quick? Yeah, apparently. Well, what's neat about all this stuff, which I'm excited that they're, you know, you, know, you don't just get everything. You have to go find it. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. to um, look for it. So the medallion, this is like somewhere in the world. And yeah, yeah it's a one-time use for uh, anywhere you want fast travel, um, which is pretty cool, I guess. Like if you have like, uh, if you know of an area, like I was telling you the other day, I found a tree that has every single mushroom. Oh. Uh, so if you're into like cooking, yeah. yeah, if you're into like cool cooking uh, recipes, you can you know, set your medallion there and always go back to it, opposed to getting into a shrine and and then having trouble. That's so cool for if you farm something, right? Yeah, sweet. Yeah, dragons. Uh, I'm also interested in how you find these because for the Korok mask specifically, they said it's just in a chest somewhere in the world. So I wonder if you're going to be coming across people who have dialogue to kind of mention this or if it's yeah. going to be you're going to get the masks from what's his name. I mean, that kind of leads into my question, which is like, is all this stuff going to be better experienced with a fresh playthrough? Yeah. Like, how, oh, how God, is that yeah. going to I fit in? I can't do that like, again. Hmm. I might. Yeah. <laughs> no. Interesting. I'm inclined. I can't. I haven't even. I'm at 130 hours. I haven't beaten the game yet. I can't. Do do, just do it. I can't. You have to just do it. I, I was way too late. I have two more shrines. I'm going to do it. I've been playing other games. <laughs> like, you want to hit Ganon at... It'll sooner than easy. later it's yeah. way too easy like when i did it i was like oh this is i was stalling because yeah. i wanted to experience it but i just completely like once you do the four dungeons and then well, the hearts like i sort of like barely... when you have all the masks in majora's mask and you fight and it's like oh that was faster than i thought makes the journey more fun though getting all those which yeah, is the same thing so with breath of the wild i think the it's not even about ganon that's how i feel like i'm i want to get all the shrines and then go and i have two more so yeah 
All right, well, that is the Master Trials expansion for Zelda. Um, they're going to announce more about the story-based expansion later on in the year. They said that, that will release holiday 2017. Uh, but let us know if this is going to bring you back into Breath of the Wild. If you've left it, are you going to start a new game? Or are you just going to start looking for these things right from your current save file? Let us know. Also, uh, show us the best pictures you can draw with that Heroes Path mode. <laughs> I don't care how vulgar it is. Just send it my way. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, that was our show. That was a weird show. That was a weird show. Yeah, I, I think uh, yeah, maybe we should have done that as a produced segment. No. That wasn't Mad Libs. No. No? No. I, right, I it liked it. Success. I loved it. You it was heard it fun. here first. It was a success. Uh, so if Kadeo, Hideo, <laughs> Kadeo <laughs> Hojima <laughs> had directed Sandlot, I think I would like it even more. It's one of my favorite movies, but you know. Fresh take. Heroes get remembered. Uh, what's going on today? Uh, yes. So at 1 p.m. Pacific in an hour... We are going to be playing some new segments of Prey with uh, some people from Arcane Studios. They're going to come in and show us. Uh, Seth Shane's going to be here. He's a lead uh, systems designer. And we're going to have a level designer in here. And I'm going to be hosting that. And I'm pretty pumped to see some new stuff today. So come back to Twitch, YouTube, or GameSpot at 1 p.m. to watch that. Uh, and I'm sure we'll get some cool stuff. And if you haven't yet, try out the Prey demo. That releases Friday. See what you think. Let us know. Yeah. As always, thanks for joining us on YouTube, Twitch, GameSpot Chats, Richard Lee, Eric Tay, Jean-Luc Saipi, and Joey Yee. Thank you for your help today. We'll be back next week, same time. See you then.